Maybe you've got a carousel for your testimonials or you're showcasing team members, or maybe it's part of a loop grid for like your products or your posts. And when you hover over it, did you notice there how the background actually zoomed out and the person zoomed in and we got some details like team manager, CEO and toe warmer appearing over there. These could be links or buttons or social sharing icons. They could even be bunches of text could be anything you want but what you get is you get this lovely bit of animation going on and you could do this within a loop carousel a loop grid for anything you want or even maybe just where you're showcasing team members so you add a little bit of versatility and you could do this on the desktop tablet mobile or maybe just for the mobile or actually no maybe just for the desktop with an app media code and i'm going to show you how to create this really quick and easy there is some css but the CSS is broken down, so it's easy for you to adapt and understand. Look, let's just cut to the chase, okay? We've got a parent container. This parent container has some padding in there, and it's a full width 100%. Inside of the parent container, we have three child containers. Each child container is also set to be a full width because they sit inside the parent container. They're 300 pixels wide, and they are 375 pixels in height. The reason I set the height is because I wanted to have a little bit of control over how things look. Every child container is a column verticular. We've got space between, because look, if I was to do this with down, can you see the words are now below her, middle or top? I went for space between just to lay things out. And I've got also got everything center aligned as well. And yes, there's a bit of padding or gap in there as well. And I'll just go over here. We've got 15 on the top. If I was to get rid of that, you can see what it's doing with the words. So very, very basic at the moment. We've got parent container. There's a bit of padding in there. And then we've got three child containers. Each one of these child containers has not got any class name applied to it. Okay, that's literally it. It's as basic as you can get. Let's now go into each one and, and just so you understand how this has been built. Inside of each child container, we have a background image. Okay, so there we go. I've gone and added in a background image. In actual fact, I got all of these images from Canva. And what I then did was separate out the background from the person. So they kind of matched in, ter matched, matched, matched in terms of lighting. Just a quick tip for you. Here's the really key thing, okay? Even though I said everything is basic, here's the really important bit. I've added in a background image. The resolution is full and it's on a no repeat, but that is it. Everything else is set to default. The position, the attachment, the display size. There is no size added here, okay? I have not selected auto cover contain custom nothing, okay? I haven't selected anything here either. You can do if you want, but I've left it. Leave that as default. This is really important. We're going to control what this does when we hover and where does it start and where does it end? What can you see? It's moving. The background moves away. We're going to control that with the CSS. If you go and modify here and then you add in CSS for what happens when you hover on the child container, it ain't going to work for you the way you want. OK, so make sure you leave it as default. Then we go to the heading. This is just a heading. OK, there's nothing going on in there. You can set the size if you want. You can do what you want. That is just a heading. We also have, sorry, we also have an image. This image is set to be a full. And if we go to the style, and again, just like the background image for the child container, I have not set the width, the max width, or the height. You leave it, okay? If you want to add on a bit of filtering to the colors, like you want to brighten, oops, I took that off then. If you want to brighten it up, you can do. And in the advanced tab, if you want to do anything here, you can. The only extra thing you need to do Okay, so let me just go back a step. The image that we've added on into this container, there is no size set. Full resolution, but there's no size set. All I've done is given it a class name of profile. Okay, so again, really, really basic. Okay, background image for the container. Leave it all as default. For the image that you add over here, leave the size as blank, but I've given it a name called profile. And then we've got a button, which you can't see until I hover, okay? The button could be links, it could be social sharing icons, it could be a bunch of text, it could be anything you want. The idea is you don't see it until you hover on the container. So if you want to style it out, you could do, but the important bit is I've given it a class name of role. So the image is profile or the avatar profile picture. And it doesn't have to be a profile picture. It could be food. It could be a product. It, you know, it, it could be words. It might not even be an image. It can be anything you want. The class name for the button is role. 
If you want to pick a different class name, go for it. But I've done that so that it's easy for you to see inside the CSS code that I'm about to share with you. The other important bit is the Z index is three. Now, I have not really added a Z index to the person because it logically followed through. But if it ever got a bit messy, make sure the button is a the highest Z index value. Because obviously, I want it to appear in front of the person, which it would have done anyway per se, but you might want to just sort out your Z indexing if you find you can't see it even when you hover. Okay, so are we clear? Profile class name for the image, role for the button. Now we go back to the child container where we had a background image. We go to the advanced tab, we scroll down and we now have custom CSS. And this is the CSS we've added. And it is really, really simple, okay? So select a role and select a profile. So for the role and the profile, so the image and the button, I'm going to apply a transition of 0.5 seconds. So if you want to make the transition slower, go and increase the value. You want to make it quicker, go and decrease the value. I think 0.5, 0.4 is pretty nice. The minute you go to one second or higher, it's a little bit slow and it can be a bit annoying when it's that slow. Right. From the get go, select a role. The role is the button, remember? Okay, the button. Oops, sorry, why did I go and click there for? Right, back over here. The button, the opacity is zero. So from the get go, that button dot roll opacity zero. When you hover, the roll opacity becomes one. So when it says select a hover, because the code is inside the child container, when I hover on the child container, now if I gave my child container a class name, then that's fine. You would then pop your class name here. So dot child container if that was the name you just got to make sure though that if you go and repeat that class name for every child container when you hover on one it will apply to everything that's on the page so just have a think about are you going to use different class names or just say selector so when i hover it only affects this and it won't affect the dog until you hover on the dog and don't worry i'm going to i'm there's a reason why um i've got the dog picture there because i'm going to make a bit of a point here so get go the button is opacity zero and then it becomes opacity one the second thing the profile picture the, the picture the avatar it's a position absolute bottom zero so let me now get rid of the bottom zero just so you can see what would happen it's now gone up there i pop it back in it's now at the bottom what about if i got rid of the position absolute can you see what it's done it's now no longer sat and it's gone and added in a bit of excess space there so you're controlling where it sits. What about the width? If I go and set this to be 100%, that's how big it is. If I go and set it to be 10%, you can literally see it's like a, a little uh, lily, lily, lilliputian, lilliput, lilliputian, Gulliver's Travels, you, you understand. So I'm going to set this to be 80%, okay? So that's what it is. Um, when you then hover over the child container, that image will now be 100%. So you can clearly see what I'm doing is if I was to start at 20% and I went up to say 50% like that, it will grow, but only to 50%. So let's go and pop that back to be 80% and 100%. Can you see why I didn't add any sizes into the image? You do it all here. So you're full on controlling it. What about the background? So over here, I've said select to the background size is 120%. I've made the image fill up more than it needs to. And I have a transition of 0.5. When you hover on the child container, I want the image to go from 120 to 100. So if I had gone and set this to be, say, 500, like really silly size, you can see what it's doing there. I found 120% worked quite nice because there was a bit of a nice transition. Why is this all so important? Well, when we go to the third uh, child container, Salacious Crumb there, if we go to the advanced tab and the CSS here, I've got a different value. I've got 70 and 90 rather than 80 and 100. Because if I went to 100% like that, I feel like the image of the dog is too big. Like, look how big these are. I mean, the dog is a little bit too much. So I've set it to be 90 instead. So it's still big, but it's not filling up as much as that estate as what it was. And that's literally it. That's the code. This code will be in the video description. It's dead easy, uh, simple to apply. 
Um, if you don't want to have it working on the mobile, you would add at media and you might say um, uh, minimum width is, uh, no, yeah, minimum width is 768. So anything below 768 pixels, this would not apply. But if you're showing like a team section on a website, or even maybe you're showcasing posts, or maybe a call to action widget, maybe you're using that within your loop grid for maybe your product or whatever. Uh, or maybe you're not using a CTA, but you want to have some sort of hover effect. It's really simple and easy to use. And hopefully when you start to get more comfortable with using CSS like this, it starts to open the gateway for you to be a bit more imaginative and stop blaming widgets for, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. There's so much you can do just with a bit of imagination. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Don't forget to check out our $1 business packs. The link is in the video description. Hey, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.